Good morning, my friends. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so thankful that I'm home. Yes, I love going and I had such a wonderful time. Of course, a very busy time because I have so many relatives and friends and my mom and my brothers and their families. And we had many, many wonderful occasions to celebrate. Also my Tanya, my niece's uh, baby with her husband, Alec, they had come to dedicate that baby to the Lord. He is the grandson of my oldest brother, Paul, and his wife, Takui. And I was just amazed at the Lord at some of the things that happened, open doors that I didn't know about before I got there. And then when I was reading Psalms 23, it was like, wow, Lord, you're the one that is our shepherd. You're the one that goes before us, leads us, guides us, restores us when we need it. And when we have such a shepherd, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for my sheep. He loves us so much. And we can just rest in that. And sometimes our direction changes because the Lord is leading us in his paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And as I have been in the Psalms, I am just uh, overwhelmed with some of the verses because David was just like us. He was crying out to the Lord asking him for mercy and saying things to the Lord, praising him all day long as he was leading his country. He was also a king, and I can't imagine the responsibility on him. And also he was fighting wars and, and lots of um, different people because they were after his life. And as I was reading, my eyes fell on chapter 26 and verse 7 of psalms and i am in the psalms and i just love it that i may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of your wondrous works that i may publish and i just love that because we need to tell of his wondrous works i just know that god when he does miracles in our lives he wants us to tell others so that they can be encouraged and one of the things that was just so wonderful for me was when I was coming from LAX to Houston and then to Baton Rouge, both flights were delayed. And I was so thankful because I love flying. I love being in airports. And I was thankful that it wasn't a flight that I was canceled or I missed it. All I want to do is get home. But delays mean something because the first flight we were on, they said, the captain came on and he said, we have a delay because there's a leak in the engine. And of course, my mind went back to my daddy and mom's and my brother's experience on the plane because of a leak in the engine. It caught on fire, but God miraculously brought them through. I said, yes, we'll wait for a leak of whatever. And they have to check it. And they checked it. They said it was from a oil before and so once they checked it we were on our way but we were delayed for like an hour and a half but when i got on the shuttle in houston to go from one terminal to the other there was a crowd of people and they were so upset because that day united had had many many flights that were delayed and one lady in particular i was sitting down at the back of the shuttle on that uh, place where you sit down and then a lady was standing right there holding on and she was loudly saying, I am upset. I am so angry. I missed an interview. They made me miss. And I almost wanted to speak up and say to her, you know what? If you better be thankful you got here safely. A delay, but safely you are here. Because if something had happened to your plane, you would not have only missed your plane or your interview, but you would have missed everything else. Because once that flight goes down and crashes, we need to be thankful that every time we get on a plane, we are safely arriving to the point where we need to go. And I was so afraid that she would turn around and punch me because she was so angry. Her face was so red and she was just shouting. But once they all got off, I thought, oh my goodness, maybe this is my terminal. I looked out, no, it was B. And there was a one worker there with the badge and she was a precious sister in the Lord that I found out later because she stayed on and I said, 
was that A or B? And she said, that's just B. We're going to A. And we started talking and I told her, I said, you know, when we miss flights, the Lord is directing our steps. And she said, praise the Lord. And then when we got A, she followed me to my gate because she wanted to talk. We hugged. I gave her my book. It was just an incredible opportunity to share the gospel with someone but she loved the lord so we were just encouraging each other and she said to me you know last night that's what i was telling my daughter and i thought it was a younger daughter she said no she's 39 and i was sharing with her how god directs our steps and she said now you're just confirming it and it was just wonderful how the lord directs our steps and then I got to my next flight and that was delayed. So I just had a good sandwich and coffee. I just sat there and enjoyed the time watching people. And then when I came and put in my boarding pass, the lady said, wait, wait, your boarding pass has been changed. And they put me in first class. I know it is a short flight from Houston to Baton Rouge, but I had such a wonderful time next to the window watching the moon and thanking the Lord that I am 30,000 feet up closer to the heavens, praising the Lord. Because when we praise the Lord, publish what he has done, it's just amazing to me how people can be encouraged. And then it says, one thing have I desired, chapter 27, of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever, all my life all my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And then verse 14, wait on the Lord, be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. And as we go through life, the most important thing is focusing on the Lord, focusing on what he has for us and those detours and those delays, those things that you think, wow, why is this happening? God has a purpose. He orders our steps. He is going before us. He is our shepherd. He is leading and guiding us. And all we need to do as sheep is keep our eyes on the shepherd, not on each other, because sheep will wander off. And I don't want to wander behind a friend that's going off or someone that is like lost his way. But I want to encourage them, follow the shepherd, follow the shepherd today in all that you're doing today. And today we are going to a funeral. And I just, as I was dressing up for that, I was thinking my precious friend, it has lost her daughter, 57 years old. And my heart goes out because those are things in life that all we can do is cry out to the Lord. David did that over and over. In verse 4, in verse 7, it says, Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also on me and answer me. He was crying out too, and he knew the... the um, grief of losing a child. When Absalom died, David wept very loudly and the people heard it. So we go, yes, we we grieve, yes, we cry, but we have a hope. We don't cry, we don't grieve like the world does, but we have a hope that Jesus is coming back. We have a hope. We will see our loved ones again. We have a hope that he is the father of all comfort, as it says in 2 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4. And I know with my mom and I and my sister-in-law, when we were grieving my brother Danny and also my daddy a few years before that, and also my cousin, my uncle, my grandparents, those that went before us, we know we have a father who comforts us. And that is why we can say, be thankful for today, be joyful for today, for the Lord has made this day and our eyes are on him. One thing have I desired that I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And that is in his presence, following our shepherd one step at a time. Be blessed today.